The mathematical principles of natural philosophy, often referred to as the Principia, is a work in three books published first in 1687. Since its publication, this book has established itself as the masterwork, the pinnacle of scientific expression, and its author as one of the greatest scientific minds of the 17th century. Outlined in this work are the fundamental laws of motion, which form the foundation for our understanding of classical mechanics, the laws of gravitation and gravitational motion, and the mathematical expressions to achieve such means, namely the fundamentals of calculus. These laws form the pillars of our understanding of the world for more than 200 years, and indeed, many of its principles are still applicable today. How can anyone change the perception of thought and the understanding of our world so drastically as the man that did 300 years ago? Sir Isaac Newton is often referred to as the father of modern day science. He unlocked the secrets of gravity, the laws of motion, and light. But perhaps falling apples were not his only priority. Newton also spent a significant amount of time occupied with his pursuit of alchemy and the study of theology and scriptures. Today, Newton is best known for contributions to our scientific understanding of the physical laws that govern us and the universe. In perhaps his most famous work, the Principia, Newton outlined three fundamental laws of motion. These laws provide an explanation of everything from the movement of a baseball, a car, our understanding of the orbit of planets, and even contributed to the exploration of the moon. Imagine a ball at rest. Now suppose that a force is imposed on it, causing the ball to travel in the direction of that force. This ball will travel in a uniform state, both speed and direction, until another force causes it to change. This is Newton's first law of motion. Every object persists in a state of rest or uniform motion in a straight line unless it is compelled to change that state by forces impressed on it. Newton's second law explains how the velocity of an object changes with external force. The significance of this law is that it allows a quantitative evaluation of force, dynamics, and motion. Its implications is that an applied force may cause a change of velocity, and a change of velocity in turn may generate a force. We can anticipate what force is required to accelerate an object, or in turn determine how large an impact moving bodies have upon collision. This is Newton's second law, F equals ma. Newton's third law of motion states that for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. Consider an object colliding into a wall. This object will impose a force A, while the wall imposes an opposite but equal force B. Newton's third law states that FA is equal to negative FB. Newton was frustrated with the limitations of conventional mathematics to describe physical phenomena. As a result, he developed calculus to address his needs. Due to his contributions to science and mathematics, Newton was knighted by Queen Anne in the year 1705. He was the first mathematician to receive this honor. Newton was known for being incredibly secretive and sensitive about his work. Newton had a capacity to focus on a task without interruption for hours on end. From 1670 to 1672, Newton directed his attention to the study of light. He performed a series of experiments involving prisms through which he identified the seven colors of light. Newton used his newfound understanding of light in order to invent the world's first reflecting telescope. This telescope focused light through the use of mirrors rather than lens. This effectively removed the chromatic aberration or the distortion of light around objects viewed through the conventional lenses of the day. Interestingly, Newton did not invent this telescope in order to observe the sky but rather to confirm his ideas on the nature of light. It was previously believed that all light emitted from the sun was pure white light. When sunlight interacted with matter on Earth, the result was a darkening of the white light, or what we perceive as color. 
Newton's interest in light began with his experiments with prisms. Newton observed that when light passes through a prism, it is refracted into its fundamental colors. Newton identified these as the seven colors of light. As a result, Newton proposed that the perception of color is due to the selective absorption of light. When light strikes an object, like an apple, all colors of light are absorbed except for red light, which is reflected. Thus, we perceive the apple as red. Newton's reflecting telescope gained attention in the scientific community, and he was asked to present his telescope to the Royal Society of London in 1672. Newton's light experiments and subsequent invention of the reflecting telescope contributed to his joining of the prestigious Royal Society of London. Many prominent members of the Royal Society have been identified as belonging to the secret society known as the Freemasons. While there are no concrete proof in existence to prove Newton was a member of this society, his association and membership with the Royal Society suggests he may have also belonged to the Freemasons. Robert Hooke, another prominent British scientist and member of the Royal Society, criticized Newton's theory on light. Newton be became increasingly offended when asked to defend his theories of light. Newton found it exhaustive to try and continuously disprove what he believed to be obsolete scientific theories. When Hooke criticized Newton's work, Newton became withdrawn and refused to continue sharing his work, choosing to work in the comfort of solitary confinement. All of Newton's findings are published in his book titled Optics. Newton's sensitivity to criticism is evident in this work. All of his light experiments occurred between 1670 and 1672. However, Optics was published in 1704, a year after his constant critic, Hooke, had died. Sir Isaac Newton spent many years studying the Bible, theology, and church history. He was born into an Anglican family, but his beliefs would have been seen in his time as being very unorthodox. Newton's religious beliefs were evident even in his more scientific writings. Newton also wrote many treatises on religion. Some are more historical, such as one which he titled Notes on Early Church History and the Moral Superiority of the Barbarians to the Romans. Others, such as Observations upon the Prophecies of Daniel and the Apocalypse of St. John, are more prophetic in nature. He believed that the Bible held answers to the eventual fate of the world. Newton never published his religious papers, and it is believed that he may have even burned many of them. In some unpublished papers which were later discovered, Newton even predicted the time when he believed the world will end. It is believed that Newton based these dates on events that had occurred within the church during his time, and which were prophesied in the books Daniel and Revelations. It is hard to believe that a man of such reason and scientific rationality could be so occupied with the seemingly irrational prophecies which he studied. However, his predictions of the end of the world may not have been one of destruction or annihilation, but simply the transition to, or the start of, a new era. Newton was also fascinated with alchemy, which served as a crucial part of his scientific career. Some individuals claim that it was Newton's background in alchemy that influenced him in his theories regarding the composition of light. From his personal notes and papers, it was found that Newton spent a great deal of time studying and performing alchemy, and that he sought to discover and create the Philosopher's Stone, which turned base metals into gold. It is even suspected that during Newton's life, he suffered from mercury or lead poisoning, and studies after his death showed that his body possessed four times the lead, arsenic, and antimony, and up to 40 times the mercury content when compared to the normal levels. During Newton's time, alchemy would have been considered a dark practice which would not have been considered suitable for a scientist of his stature. Sir Isaac Newton was born on the 25th of December, 1642, in the county of Lincolnshire, England. Born premature, young Isaac was not expected to survive. He was born to a prosperous farmer, also by the name of Isaac Newton, who died shortly before his birth. At the age of three, Newton's mother remarried a wealthy suitor, leaving Isaac to the care of his maternal grandmother. This separation and neglect had a lasting impact on Newton, as seen through his insecurities and his relationship with his mother. His enmity to his mother and stepfather, as revealed through his journals, show that he had threatened his father and mother to burn them and the house over them. 
Sir Isaac Newton's formal education began at the age of 12 when he was enrolled in the King's School in Grantham. It was during the five years here that Newton was exposed to the sciences of the time and with the help of a local apothecary, chemistry as well. His interest in alchemy is believed to have been fueled by this early exposure to chemistry. The impact these teachings had on young Newton is as clear as his engraved signature on the windowsill, which is still visible in the school today. At the age of 17, Newton was reunited with his mother. Recently widowed, she forced Newton to leave school and attempted to make him into a farmer, just like his father before him. This, however, proved challenging since Newton despised the dullness in the life of a farmer. Newton would rather spend his time trying to understand the physical world around him than deal with crops and plants. In such instance occurred while riding his horse on the way back to the family farm. Approaching a steep hill, Newton dismounted to give his horse a break. As he and the horse walked up the hill, Newton became lost in his thoughts. He was so engrossed with the ideas in his head that Newton continued the many miles home on foot. This passion for learning and strong focus resulted in Newton being admitted into the Trinity College of Cambridge. It was here that Sir Isaac Newton began his extraordinary career. As is often exhibited by individuals of great intellect, Newton demonstrated odd and peculiar behaviors and was known for his unique personality. One of Newton's most defining characteristics was his ability to focus, and this is perhaps one of the reasons for his great success. He was often described as being absent-minded and in truth had no desire for anything outside of his studies. He would work tirelessly until he found the answers to his questions. Despite his great accomplishments and fame, not all aspects of Newton's life were to be envied. Newton's personality resulted in strained relationships and his inability to connect emotionally with others. His introverted personality could be explained by his emotionally straining childhood and insecurities. Newton was also known for rewriting numerous papers and manuscripts with little rationale or reason. However, there may have been something more to this peculiar man's odd mannerisms. With our current understanding of Newton's intellect and his odd behaviors, he would most likely have been diagnosed with Asperger's syndrome. Asperger's syndrome can be used to describe a person with significant difficulties in social interactions alongside restricted and repetitive patterns of behavior and interests. People with Asperger's often have an orientation towards detail and an interest in systemizing, which can look like obsessiveness. Some may show remarkable facility in a narrowly focused and usually non-social area, such as baseball statistics or train schedules. In the case of Newton, his interest in physics, mathematics, theology, and alchemy were such examples. Newton died on March 20th, 1727, at the age of 84. On his deathbed, he said, I do not know what I may appear to the world, but to myself I seem to have been only like a boy playing on the seashore, and diverting myself and now and then finding a smoother pebble or a prettier shell than ordinary, while the great ocean of truth lay all undiscovered before me. So, the next time you pick up a math textbook, suffer through an integral, aim your telescope at the stars, or place both feet firmly on the ground. Remember that you are, in one way or another, using Newton's work. The fundamental principles and laws of nature we take for granted each and every day were divined by a very odd man with no time for criticism and a great love of science. Remember that our world is better defined thanks to the genius of a strange, absent-minded, deep thinker, and that Newton's understanding of our world extended far beyond the distance it takes to reach for some low-hanging fruit.